Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya party deck titled Join the Party, as we're also playing with four copies of Winota, Joiner of Forces, the 4 mana 4 4 legendary human warrior, saying whenever a non human creature we control attacks, look at the top six cards of our library, and we can put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking, and it also gains indestructible until end of turn. So an incredibly powerful ability, although it does require us to build our deck around Winota by having enough cheap non-human enablers and a lot of human payoff cards to then find with Winota. And as if this deck building challenge weren't enough, I also decided to put this into this party shell by including all the different party creature types. So we need a good mix of clerics, warriors, wizards and rogues to have enough party types to enable some of our party synergies. And in order to accomplish that, we happen to play a lot of these creatures that have multiple creature types at once. So we've got Stonework Pack Beast as a 2 mana 2 one. That's a beast, so it's a non-human for Winota. And it also counts as a cleric, rogue, warrior and wizard for party purposes. And same goes with Tajuro Paragon, 2 mana for a 3-2 elf, so a non-human for Winota. And also counts as a cleric, rogue, warrior and wizard, so will help us enable all those party synergies. Now we'd need to take a look at some of the human payoff cards we can find with Winota, and it also works out perfectly here since a lot of the top end cards in the deck happen to be humans. So we've got Veteran Adventure, 6 mana for a 5-5 five, five human with Vigilance, and Veteran Adventure is also a Cleric, Rogue Warrior and Wizard, so once again a creature that can help us fill out our party to enable our party synergies, and it costs one less to cast for each creature in our party. So if we already have a full party in play, Adventure only costs one and a green to cast, so quite a bargain, and of course hitting a 5-5 Vigilance with Winota is quite nice as well. And same goes for Tazri, Beacon of Unity, 5 mana for a 4-6, Legendary Human Warrior, that costs one less to cast for each creature in our party, and then has a nice activated ability, so let's just take a look at the top 6 cards of our library, and we can reveal up to 2 Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, Wizard and or Ally cards from among them and put them into our hand, so it can potentially provide quite a bit of card advantage as well. And then another card that synergizes greatly with Winota is Squad Commander, 4 mana for a 3-3, that when it enters a battlefield creates a 1-1, a white core warrior creature token for each creature in our party and the commander is a warrior himself so we can potentially make up to four core warrior tokens when commander enters a battlefield and at the beginning of combat on our turn if we have a full party meaning we have a cleric rogue warrior and wizard among four different creatures on the battlefield at the same time creatures we control get plus one plus so and gain indestructible until end of turn so our creatures can potentially attack unopposed and Commander making all those core warriors also synergizes greatly with Winota, since every one of those core warriors will give us a separate Winota trigger when they attack, potentially giving us a ton of extra creatures with Winota's ability. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Archpriest of Iona, whose power is equal to the number of creatures in our party, and Archpriest being a cleric himself will be at the very least a 1-2, potentially growing up to a 4-2 with a full party, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, target creature gets plus one plus one and gains flying until end of turn, potentially giving us a bit of evasion on a stalled board. And then we also have the full play set of Tajuru Blightblade, one mana for a 1-1 one, one elf rogue with death touch. So the rogue creature type is something you don't often see in the Naya colors, so having it on a one drop is quite nice. And death touch of course means that it can attack and at the very least is going to trade for an opposing creature. So it also synergizes nicely with Winota as a non-human for one mana. And then at two mana we've already covered Stonework Pack Beast, which can potentially fix our mana as well and Tajuro Paragon, which we can kick for three additional mana, in which case it can provide a bit of card advantage by finding a creature with a corresponding type among the top six cards of our library. And then Luminarch Aspirant sadly doesn't enable Winota, but we can find it with Winota as a human cleric. And of course, a cleric still synergizes with our other party cards. And it's a 2 mana 1 1 that at the beginning of combat on our turn puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, so it can provide a bit of value turn after turn. Then at 3 mana our only creature is a Relic Robber, a 2-2 Goblin Rogue with haste, so it's a non-human for Winota and a Rogue for party purposes. And when a Relic Robber deals combat damage to a player, that player creates an 0-1 Colorless Goblin Construct Artifact creature token that deals 1 damage to them at the beginning of their upkeep, and it cannot block, so it's just gonna sit there and deal damage to the opponent turn after turn. So the Relic Robber also synergizes quite nicely with Archpriest potentially giving it flying, or our squad commander making it indestructible. 
And then, of course, Squad Commander. This is a great play to make before we play Winota, so we have those warriors in play, so we can potentially attack with them the turn we play Winota. Of course, our full play set of Winota, and then we've covered two copies of Tansri and four copies of a Veteran Adventure. Then going over the mana base, we do have the luxury of having all 12 pathways in our colors already, so that makes the mana base a lot better, as well as two copies of Base Camp, which does come into play tapped, but then makes mana of any color we need, including making black or red mana for Tansri's activated ability, so that gives us a nice discount. And then four copies of Fabled Passage alongside two of each basic land, could potentially get away with only one mountain, since we don't need a ton of red mana, but since mill decks are a thing, it's nice to have a bit of insurance in case the opponent mills our one mountain. And then we could also consider playing some off-color pathways, again, for activating Tansri's ability, but it's nice to have two of each basic to search up. And then we also get to play with Gigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion, so it's a nice non-human for Winota, and can potentially also synergize nicely with activating Tansri's ability. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Missing red, and don't have the best mix of creatures to enable Winota early on. So I think this might be a mulligan. All right, this is better, and then... I guess we'll get rid of one Winota and hope the other one survives. Turn two Paragon, turn three probably Pack Beast. Hope for a turn four Winota with two triggers. Turn one Hateful Eidolon. That doesn't bode well for my creatures to survive here. Second Eidolon. And an Archfiend's Vessel. Alright, at least they didn't have a dead weight here. We'll just play Pack Beast. Could also play Archpriest. If we're afraid of Mogus' favor, which kills Pangbeast but doesn't kill Archpriest. But uh, I think I want to get uh, non human in play for Winota. And then we'll fetch up a Plains. Take it from there. So our opponent's not doing much at the moment. Alright, so we won't be able to quite run out Winota yet, but we get to complete a full party if they don't kill anything. And that's gonna give one of our creatures flying. We see Heartless Act on Archpriest. All right, at least they killed the only actual human. So the curve of Squad Commander into Winota is going to be great. Timurat's fine. All right. Commander, full party means indestructible attacks. And next turn... We might be able to just win the game if they don't disrupt anything. Opponent made sure not to lose Timurat when they lost the Devotion from Archfiend's Vessel. So we'll see. Hopefully they just play a creature instead of play a removal spell. And Skyclave Shades, just perfect for us here. Alright, let's get ready for some Winota triggers. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we could probably pretty much find all the remaining humans in our deck at this point. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this? Don't hate it. We'll need to draw a few lands, but we've got a good mix of creature types 
for squad commander and Winota here, especially if we commander first. I guess we have two clerics early on, which isn't ideal, but I'll still take it. Opponent on blue-black. And can play this as a green source now. Alright, so can play base camp. And then... Opponent could have the 1-3 flash rogue. In which case, I either want to put counter here, leave Aspirin back, or put counter on Aspirin to attack with both. I guess we'll do it like this. Could see Heartless Act in response, eliminate. Fair enough. So Commander makes two tokens. Aha, uh -huh, Teferi's tutelage, their opponent's trying to mill us with the enchantment here. Yeah, we want our commander first. And hopefully we know the resolves. If we suspect a counter spell, we can maybe bait out a counter with adventure first. Extinction event on even gets rid of commander and all the tokens. Instead, drown on our cleric, that's fine. Six cards in graveyard, so kind of feels like they have a drown in hand since they were looking at my graveyard, but yeah, I can't play the adventure anymore. So I guess we can bait out drown with commander, and if it resolves, it's even more tokens for Winota, which is probably fine. Uh, so we'll attack first. Alright, it's going to be a Thieves Guild Enforcer instead, which will gain Death Touch. Alright, still not too bad. Commander, and then try We Know till next turn. We've got 41 cards remain, opponent's already at 12. Thirst's going to mill us for a decent amount, but makes it more likely that we can resolve We Nota. So Mills is for six. And there's a good chance my opponent is dead here. Adventure. That's a miss. Aspirants. And a Winota, which can attack. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand looks great. Turn one, Blind Blade. Turn two, Aspirants. Or we could play Pack Beast to prioritize playing non-humans for Winota first. Opponent's got a Moss Viper. All right, that's Death Touch face-off here. Um, yeah, I guess we can afford to play one Aspirant. Don't really want to trade a Blind Blade. To put the counter on Aspirant itself for now. So black green, a ram through gonna kill Aspirant, that's good. Acting as a bit of a distraction while we set up Winota. So just need an untapped land here, so any land besides base camp will do. Right, gonna play Paragon then. Gonna see more removal, I'm sure. If they have instant speed removal for Winota, we have a backup, so that's not the end of the world. Opponent's gonna main phase it. 
and hit for three. Come on, land. There we go. Think we go for whites. Although they do seem to have some more instant speed interaction here. Well, we get to Winota triggers, which find Tansri. And that's a miss. Still not bad. And our creatures might get to attack once again next turn. Hooded Blindfang, one for Death Touch with author text. Opponent stays back. So... The only creature that doesn't have a reasonable attack is Pack Beast. But it gets us a Winota trigger, which is probably still worth it. So I think we just attack with all. I don't get to activate Tosser even if I play a land here. I guess I could play Aspirin pre-combots. And then where do we even put the counter? If I put it on Pack Beast, I just block it with a Blight Fang. So might as well put it on Blight Blade here. And then we can put Giganta in hand. And this will hit Adventure. And probably Aspirant. Making a Winota indestructible here could be decent, since then they can't trade, but we have a backup, so I'm not too concerned. And we're gonna be pretty low on non-humans here after they trade. Malachi Rebirth on Scavenger. Fair enough. So that will return to the battlefield. So the game's not over yet, but we're in a reasonable spot. We know Ty gets one more trigger from Blind Blade. Grim Dancer 3 3 Lifelink Death Touch. And our opponent attacks. We'll take it. Archpriest. Uh, let's see, we've got Cleric, Rogue, one more type, and then Warrior, so we will have a full party. So I can fly over either the Adventure for more damage or Blind Blade. I guess Adventure makes sense. And we'll put all the counters there, too. Do I send in the Aspirants? I don't think I do. Get one more trigger, gets another adventure. This opponent has to block. And they are likely dead next turn. Don't really see them dealing 11 damage. Alright, another rebirth means Grim Dancer comes back. And this time they choose Menace and Death Touch for Grim Dancer. Second Blight Fang. It's not gonna quite do it here. So our opponent attacks with all. Yeah, they actually get us pretty low here thanks to the double Blight Fang. But we should be able to survive. So we can take four from Blight Fang and Scavenger down to one. And then just make sure we don't die to the Grim Dancer, and then we should be able to attack back for lethal, since we'll still have a full party. We're at one. Move to combats. And then give the big one flying. Ended up being pretty close. Sweet. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Um, it's a little on the slow side, but I don't hate it. Got a good mix of creature types. And we'll be in a good spot to potentially top deck Winota. Now I could play Blind Blade on one, I think I would rather get the tapped base camp out of the way. Maybe turn two, either Pack Beast or Passage plus Blind Blade. Facing a mill deck. Alright, I guess we could play Pack Beast now, just to be mana efficient. A Ruin Cram plus Fabled Passage mills for six. Alright, and then... Probably want this as a white source. Pank Beast gets to attack. And next turn we can play a pretty cheap Tansrian Adventure. If we play Tansri first, we can have a two mana adventure. Hopefully, we still have a basic land left in our deck. Double Fable Passage, gonna mill us for 12 here essentially. So we'll have 28 cards remaining. Let's find out. Uh, still a mountain left. And then we'll just play Veteran Adventure. Where do we put counter? Probably Blind Blade. Now we can potentially activate Tosri if we draw land. Alright, so... I'm guessing putting another adventure in play is going to be better than... activating Tosri. So we'll just start there. Play this. See if they have a response. And then move to combat. Counter can go on... Probably Blind Blade. Attack with all. And then we can put Gigantha in hand. That's why I waited with putting Gigantha in hand in case of a bound spell. Now we can just replay... Adventure. Right, 19 cards remain. Opponent decided to even take the damage from Aspirant. Maybe fearing some removal afterwards. Well, let's see if we're dead. 13 cards remain. Do they have Cacophony, maybe? Just an opt for now. Cacophony mills for 8. Five cards left. Do they have another one? Nope, just an opt. So best they can do is Secret Keeper mill for four. Which is not going to be enough. Wind Robber is a chum blocker, but they're still dead on board here. Oof, and my opponent explodes. Close game here against Mono Blue Mill. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand's great, except it's missing white mana, although we can potentially rely on Pack Beast to provide white mana for us, even if it's not ideal. I'll try it. Got a good chance of just drawing into white source, and otherwise we'll try and rely on our Pack Beast. 
for now. Play a forest, turn two, looking at Paragon. Or we can go Pack Beast and turn three Aspirants, thanks to the extra mana required here. Alright, there's Fabled Passage, so no need to worry about having the right colors anymore. Opponent on a Kicker Synergy deck. Probably Sultai colored. Verazol as a 3 3 here. I'll offer the trade. Verazol can be pretty scary. Opponent takes it, so we got our three damage in. Fetch up a planes. Maybe next turn we nota, we'll see. Now with Verasol, they can copy their next kick spell. Luckily, if they have a Blood Chief's Thirst, they're forced to actually cast it with Kicker to copy it with Verasol. They don't get to copy a one mana Thirst to kill both Paragons. Islands maybe means Roost of Drakes with Kicker. And our opponent copies it with Verosol, so yeah, double Roost is kind of scary here. So, opponent does get to trade for my two Paragons, but hopefully Winota can deliver some presents. Could also play double Pack Beast first. I don't know if that's worth it. We potentially get more Winota triggers, but if the opponent has instant speed interaction for Winota or just removal in general, it doesn't quite work out. I think we should probably get in with Winota while we can. And this can be green. Tonsri is a good hit. And Archpriest isn't bad. Opponent's gonna trade. Take eight. Nope, Verazol's gonna jump. Alright, so we're still on the board, but those two copies of Rooster Drakes are gonna make things a lot more difficult. Next turn I can potentially get a full party by playing double pack beasts. Which will give us a rogue and a wizard, essentially. Ferrosol X equals zero, so can copy the next kicker spell once again. Might see a removal spell, thirsts with kicker, yep. Copied by Ferrosol, so can take out Tasri and Winota. And still leaves two Drake tokens behind. Yep, so we're definitely in trouble here. Well, let's try to rebuild. So what's the best way forward? Could just play Adventure for 5 mana. That's my entire turn gone. Feels like we want to play it for cheaper. And then now can get to a full party, so I guess we'll go Pack Beast plus Aspirants. And where do we put the counter? Probably on Aspirant itself. No attacks. And next turn we can complete our party with Pack Beast into Adventure. But if my opponent has any kicker cards remaining, we're gonna fall further and further behind. Throne of Makindi also doing some work there. Providing that one extra mana they need it. And 
All right, so full party has been achieved. So, plus one, plus one flying. I guess if I put counter on Aspirant and then give it flying, it would trade for both Drakes, which I guess is still reasonable. Opponent takes it instead. Still have Gigantha we can potentially work with. Uh-oh, opponent's charging up Throne of Makindi. The fact that they didn't trade might imply the kicker spell that adds counters to their creatures and finds two additional lands. So my opponent's going to be left with four drakes that all get those two plus one plus one counters. So we could use a squad commander here. Or another Winota. It's going to be an inscription of insight instead. Draw two, bounce two. And also make an illusion. So, yeah, that was pretty effective too. Yeah, I think squad commander might be the only way out at this point. It's just too many drakes for us to fight through without indestructible. So, where do we add the counter? Maybe I should start putting counters on Adventurer so it can eventually attack profitably. If I put counter on Archpriest and it attacks, it just trades for two Drakes, which isn't amazing, although maybe saves me from dying if they have the Kicker Ramp spell that adds two counters everywhere. Yeah, maybe that's fine. Probably could have put the plus one counter somewhere else. Opponent just jumps, can be a good sign, probably means we're just dead. Another inscription of insight. Now squad commander is probably too late. Opponent can attack for 10. Don't have any profitable blocks. Maybe we Nota could still get there. Instead Aspirant. Yeah, this seems over. And another inscription. All right, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand's okay. Got good mana. We'll have a reasonably sized party for commanders, so if we draw Winota, we'll be in great shape. Instead, just more commanders. I'll play... Let's see, your opponent's on some sort of multicolor deck. Yeah, I'll play Aspirant first, I think. Get her plus one counter value. Mm -hmm. 
So next turn commander would make three tokens. And then we're just one creature type away from having a full party. Timurt calls it dead. Uh huh. So this might be a Nathroy mutate deck from the looks of it. That can attack. All right. Hopefully we'll find another Paragon, Pack Beast, or Adventurer here. I'll take a Winota too. So a lot of good top decks. Double Sentinel's Eyes. Make that three. All right. Four for Vigilance. Yeah, I guess we'll trade for it. We've got plenty of squad commanders in hand. Ooh, Blind Blade is a rogue, that also does it. And my opponent explodes. So yeah, Squad Commander, even without Winota, thanks to all those creature types, can do a ton of work. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with how our deck performed today. Might not be able to compete with some of the tier 1 standard decks out there, but definitely more than capable of doing some powerful things and getting some cool synergies going. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.